Welcome, okay. uh, welcome all to another yet another golf show that is Golf Bangladesh has been conducting. You know, so here today we have two distinguished guests among ourselves. One is Mr. Brigadier Selim Akhtar. You know him all. He is a legendary golf person in Bangladesh. We'll talk to him about Bangladesh golf history and others. And next we have another personality from Myanmar, based in Singapore. He was ex-director of Asian Tour. Welcome, Mr. Uh, Miss Toy. Well, okay, so I start. Okay, I start with Mr. Brigadier Selim Akhtar, sir. Uh, Brigadier Selim Akhtar, sir. Uh, my first question to you: I have seen you for a long time. You work with almost all international golf forums like R&D, USGA, IGF, Asian Tour, PGTA, BGA, BPGA. And also, I found that you had been engaged with a lot of golf activities of R&D, development activities. So my question to you is, whatever you, we, I personally went, based on that, my experience is that, especially in Europe, people know two persons from Bangladesh in golf. One is player, Siddhiku Rahman, and another you as administrator, golf administrator. Why it is so? What you have done to Bangladesh golf for the last 20 years, the people still remembers outside, especially also in Bangladesh. Can you share the history of Bangladesh golf for the last twenty years, sir? Yeah, I, I have to. I, you have to. You have to bear with me then, uh, because of the question I need to go back a little into history. Well, I uh, first thing is that when I was in Myanmar for about from two thousand to two thousand three, I got quite deeply involved and in, interested in uh, all activities relating to golf. And actually, Thwait's younger brothers, who they 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 won the club there, YCDC and and the driving range near the Golden Valley. I was uh, I became quite friendly with them also. So when I came back to Bangladesh, uh, I got involved with the club and the federation in 2007, and I realized that they are actually living in their own little island with no contact with the outside world, uh, the golfing world. Uh, or little or no contact. In Siddiq had also not turned professional by that at that time. Uh, and I started exploring all the contacts. In fact, starting writing to RNA. I did not know much about RNA at that time. First to the USGA, then to RNA, and that's how I developed the contacts. Uh, and gradually I explored what all can I extract out of RNA uh, to develop the Gulf in Bangladesh. And over the years, I found out that I could, they could help a lot, which they did. In fact, I'm extremely grateful to r and for continued support since 2008, I think, especially the girls' program, the boys' program. They've been funding, they've been helping us, sponsoring uh, the coaching courses which they started in India. Uh, uh, in fact, paid for all the trips of the coaching courses which the people went in the early stages. And from the USG also, I got a lot of help because when I did the course uh, ratings, uh, the USG helped us not only in providing the technical hands, but also funded the expense to nearly 50% of the cost of the USG. Uh, that's how, uh, and later on, as we moved on and we wanted to move to the international circuit, I got in touch with the Asian Tour, the PGTI, and the first contact with the Asian Tour, uh, I think Irfan was there at the time. Uh, and uh, other the all, all the previous uh, lot of people uh, that's we got the Asian tour in, and PGTI in. okay sir I'll come back to you sir stand by please now let me bring Ms. Toye Ms. Toye I know you for a long time you have been in Asian tour as senior director development for quite a long time so tell me something uh, you have been also in, uh, involved in Bangladeshi first Asian development tour that took place in Kurmitula in 2010. Uh, Gamin phone, I think, I, uh, so far I can remember. And th that was Gamin, sort of like Gamin phone. So, yeah, Gamin phone. Okay. Can you share us, Ms. Toye, about the moving of Asian development tour and Asian tour to Bangladesh? What role did you play there? Okay. Um, thank you for having me here. Um, when I actually, how we actually also started in Bangladesh is uh, was actually in Q school. And at Q school, I saw that in those uh, 40 qualified professional players, there was a player from Bangladesh. And we didn't have any player from Bangladesh or we didn't have any presence in Bangladesh. 
So I did go to Citicor and I did ask like, okay, how do I get in touch? Because I said, there is a, if there is a good enough player to come in to, to get an Asian tour card, there must be a golf course, good golf course and good federation. So that's when I started to contact, um, like uh, what uh, uh, Major General um, Salim said, uh, may maybe he had contacted Irfan because that's how most probably Siddiqur got into the Q school. And afterwards I started uh, contacting the uh, Federation, most probably took me a year. Because every time I called, you know, I was trying to get in touch with Major Anis or anybody that I can really speak to to come over and check it all out. So when we did everything, you know, we went through the formalities of uh, trying to get a sponsor. And of course there was a promoter there. And finally uh, it happened. So we started with the Asian Development Tour, uh, which is a secondary tour of the Asian Tour. And I mean, for us, it's any tour is fine and it's great. And we were so happy that there was a sponsor. It was Gramophone and we came over and um, actually uh, held the tournament there. And it was really, it was really fantastic. It was amazing actually, because we never thought it was something that we could have. And uh, when I came there first time, it was very surprising to see a lot of, uh, actually, you had quite a few uh, professional players, maybe over 20, around 30. And when we had our first tournament there, the ADT there, um, you also had um, juniors there and lots of girls too. So that was quite amazing too. And, you know, we held clinics and everything. And that's where Major General saying that, um, William was saying that uh, he contacted the RNA and we have to thank, you know, I saw that I even used that, that even Bangladesh has a junior quite, quite organized, I would say. And I was quite surprised, but I was happy to be there. Okay, I'll come back to you, Ms. Tue. Uh, let me bring back Mr. Selim Akhtar, Mr. Selim Akhtar. Uh, sir, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, loud and clear. Okay, so my next question is to you. You have been working with R&D day night, especially for their one program. I, I know your, myself is golf for education. And also you brought a lot of many coaches from England, New Zealand, Australia. And also you brought a lot of equipment, maintenance equipment from them. And also you brought course architect, you brought uh, maintenance staff, all this. I mean, you did a lot of things with R&D for the development of Bangladesh golf. Why I'm telling all this, informing all this to my audience is just to keep a record. People should know this history. So that in future, people know exactly who did what. So you did a lot of development work alongside, uh, I mean, seeking assistance from R&D. How could you, you do all this? And at present, we, don't, we are not getting that kind of support, uh, especially in terms of coaching, uh, equipment, maintenance equipment, maintenance staff, etc. So how could you convince them, these r and outside international community, international platforms? All right. Uh, when I started, when I wanted to start in uh, 2007 or 8, today I'm much more knowledgeable about golf and uh, whether you call it coaching or course planning, making or like right now I'm involved with actually planning a development of a new course in Bangladesh. Uh, hopefully it'll come through a new course around in Dhaka. So when I started it, I was also personally not so much knowledgeable, but I kept on self-studies and I contacted a lot of people outside. So I didn't know how to start. So first I did was to pick up the 10 best caddy, caddies from Kovitola uh, to start with. The first challenge was they had no education, class three or class four and class five. And uh, I had two commitments to R&A before they would fund me is, my program would include uh, nutrition support because they're very poor people. Uh, they'll provide uh, golfing support, all the expenses related to training and coaching. And uh, third was to include a module for education. Over the years that I'll run, I will include education. The interesting thing was these, these uh, 10 boys were all in about early 20s uh, and 21, 22, 24, something like that. And with school education up to three and four or nothing, I engaged uh, three separate modules. I Three times a week, I used to get teachers from other college, retired teachers, one for maths, one for English, one for Bangla. 
And I told that those teachers, look, they're grown up boys, they're adults. Do not try to teach a school syllabus to them. I just want them, they should be able to communicate in simple English and simple Bangla. They should be able to, to write their own scorecards, embarkation cards at the airports. I don't want to fill up all their embarkation cards. You know, there was a challenge in those days when I took the, you have to fill up their cards also. With that objective, that uh, education program continued for about, I think, four or five years. Uh, uh, once a month, they used to have tests. We used to monitor test results. And when the r &D team came here, they were quite so emotional to see uh, the, the old guy has died as a professor from uh, St. Andrews University. Uh, that these boys from the slums are taking, they're able to write, they're able to talk in English. And the nutrition program was there to help them build up their health and, of course, the training program. The first coach I got was from New Zealand, uh, Kevin Smith, I think, for two years. I got uh, two or three years from the UK, John Little, and then another two years or three years from uh, uh, Ian Smith from Germany, with the British guy, but from Germany, and also from India. We took a lot of support. But you see, you need a. We, I was not a paid employee. I was doing absolutely on a voluntary basis. Nobody ever told me what to do, whom to contact, which way to go. Uh, I just charted out my own ways. I created my own requirements. I just visioned what I should do, and I kept you know all through the evenings and my day, uh, day or evenings, uh, sending emails to all possible organizations. And one directed me to the other. That's why I kept on connecting to people. Even today, I'm connected to so many people. But I'm on a different level. I, I'm now working on the, making golf courses. So since I've stepped out of that position now, uh, well, I hope they will continue. But you need somebody who can work without being told what to do and find his own way where to go. Okay, sir. I'll come back to you. Uh, just stand by kindly. Uh, now let me bring again Miss uh, Toye. Uh, Miss Toye, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, let me put it in solo spin so that, uh, okay. So the next question is to you. You had been in Bangladesh in 2010, as you say. I knew another, uh, the chairman and commissioner, Chila Han, who Chila happens Han. to be brother, uh, old, yeah, Chila Han, brothers of I you, know. elder brother of you. Uh, can you tell us what you did you find then, the structure of Bangladesh golf, the official, the players, and now, do you have any idea, knowledge about Bangladesh golf? Well, when we first, okay. Uh, so, <clears throat> excuse me. So when we first got there, you know, uh, when I got in contact and finally I could come over to Bangladesh, which was invited by, you know, Bangladesh uh, Golf Federation, I had to present to Dila, who is the yes chairman, uh, chairman of uh, uh, Asian Tour, that you know we have a chance and there is a possibility, and I do need to go and see the golf course in Bangladesh. So he gave me permission. So we, I went together with Irfan during then. My first visit, most probably was 2009 or 2010, and to to check out the golf course, yeah, uh, the golf course, and also the facilities. That time, your new the Kumaratu uh, Tula Club House was the old clubhouse. I don't know how the new one looks like now. I heard it was fantastic. So anyway, so we were allowed to go. Uh, he we, we tried to come over. We come over there and try and get a course uh, tournament happening. So I had to talk to the officials and everything to see what was available, what we can do. And even, you know, to start off with the ADT, it was fantastic just to have a presence, you know, um, a presence there in Bangladesh is great because with the Asian tour, even though we have a little highlight or you know some any kind of media press release, it is to show the world that there is a great golf course, there is professional golf in Bangladesh, you know, and being there, uh, it showcases what um, the country can offer, you know. So it's also good for tourism and everything, you know. So just. Asian tour being there, even though it's with the Asian development tour. And I know now I, I, I hear that there is the Asian tour tournament in Bangladesh and which is great because we were trying to, you know, get an Asian tour event because it is much higher in price money. You get all the different golfers, uh, you know, different level, high level golfers there. So, you know, it all started, you know, just from actually seeing a Bangladesh professional player at our qualifying school, which is before every 
uh, year, every season, you know, you have to go through a qualifying school. Okay. Stand by, please. I'll come back to you. Uh, now, let me bring Mr. Selim Akhtar, Vigil Selim Akhtar. Uh, I think you can hear me, sir. My next query to you is, uh, you had been, as you said, I also I know... Can I can hear you. I want to speak, sir, go ahead. To speak about the girls' program. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll Let me add the question and then you add that part also, sir. That is, uh, my next question is, uh, you had been here I mean, development of, you've been working, as can, you said. With can you hear me now? I can hear you, sir. Uh, you add with your that part that you want to talk about girls' development also. Uh, how? Development how, also. Uh, how, how? Asian tour, among Asian development tour. Came, Asian tour, among Asian development tour. Came when the decision to take an ADT and not a full tour at that point in time was the sponsorship money. We didn't have money. So the only thing we could uh, find the Garmin phone to sponsor was to the level of ADT. That's the whole uh, reason we started with ADT. Plus, we wanted an experience how to run a tournament, manage a tournament of that level. So I think that was a good stepping stone for us to move into the Asian Tour for later, where we found sponsors to uh, fund the Asian Tour. I want to say a few words about the girls' golf in Bangladesh. When I started in 2007 and 8. Uh, Bangladesh really did not have a women's team. Actually, a few members widely used to play, but they're too old to be, be uh, you know, go to the international level of standard of the game. So I actually picked up 15 girls, right again from the slums. They were Katie's daughters. But by this time, I had uh, gained some experience, so I said they have to be school going. I picked up school going girls with the same education condition that I will fund your, uh, pay for your golfing training. I'll pay for your nutrition every day, but you have to, I'll pay for your education, your school fees. But if you drop out of the school, I will drop you. I made sure they continue to stay on the program and also pass to the high school. That was a great achievement because today out of those 15 girls, six girls are playing for the national team and they do participate in a lot of regional championships like Sonia and a few others. So I think that's one thing that gives me a great uh, sense of achievement that these six girls, from the slums, their lives have been able to change. There is a different level of life today. Okay, sir. The nice okay, to hear. Sir. The nice to hear. The course is deep. I come back to you. I come back to you. Now, let me fall back uh, again. Let me fall back again. Mr. Can you hear me? Mr. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, I think there is an echo, maybe audio. Uh, sorry, I couldn't hear uh, Sorry, I couldn't hear Okay, let me come back okay. again. You let me come back again. Uh, you know Bangladesh golf. You, you know, know Bangladesh, Bangladesh golf. You know Malaysia. Indonesian, Malaysian golf also. Indonesian, Malaysian golf also. So all these countries have very good in golf, but unfortunately, Malaysia after Saban and then Green, Indonesia, I don't find that name in Asian tour level. Why it is so? Because we have not more than 100 golf courses. Yeah, I find that name in Asia to learn. Why it is so? Because we have not more than 100 golf courses. It's it's uh, the questions are a little bit jumbled up. It's, it's uh, like the questions are a little bit jumbled up. Um, about um, golf in Indonesia, Malaysia. In Indonesia, Malaysia. Is that correct? Is that correct? Uh, I think, do you have any, uh, I think we have some problem with audio. I think we have it's some problem with audio. It is getting a bit more. It is getting a bit more. It is so getting, it is 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 sorry, I didn't get the question. I, yeah, sorry, I didn't get the question. Question was, why am I in English in Malaysia? Why am I in English in Malaysia? I guess the time to ask you why Myanmar, Indonesia, Malaysia has not been able to produce top level golfers for the Asian Tour. 
Ah, uh, I see. Okay. Uh, ah, I see. Okay. So, uh, each and every so local, each and every uh, local, local professional, country, professional country, country. differ. So it is also part of the players. So it is also part of the players. Uh, like in Myanmar, we have like in Myanmar, we have a a not enough players. Enough players. And they're a little bit older. And they're a little bit older. We're also we're working with the junior also working junior we're with the junior golf also we're in Myanmar. With the junior golf also we're in Myanmar. With an age, we, <laughs> we, mainly, mostly mainly in Asia. Mainly in Asia. We have to go to you know people their college to get their college college to get their college. The Facebook or the YouTube or Facebook or YouTube or on there, sound is coming equal. Sound is coming equal. Facebook or YouTube if you open or YouTube if you open. That sound is coming back. I mean, it is big. That sound is coming back. I mean, it is big. So you should close the Facebook. So you should close the Facebook and YouTube. So that echo is not done. So that echo is not done. You should close the page of Facebook. Okay, I, should close the page of Facebook. I don't have I don't have Facebook on. I don't have I don't have Facebook on. Okay. And me now. Okay. And me now. Okay. Uh, still it is record. I mean somewhere. Uh, still it is record. I mean somewhere. Some uh, uh, relay is happening uh, like the uh, relay is happening like in LinkedIn, in YouTube, in Facebook. YouTube is just are coming back. are coming back. I've, I've shut down all the other apps on my phone. Okay. Okay. Uh, now can you hear me, okay. Miss? Okay. Uh, now can you hear me, Miss? Wait. Yeah, I can. Still support. Yeah, Please I can. Still so, support. Please. As you're so, as you're with with the the with the Indonesian it's a little, there's still a little bit of echo. Still, uh, there's still a little bit of Okay, but um, so I, I talked a little bit about the Myanmar Golf. Now, Indonesia Golf, there's a lot of juniors. And there, golf, there's a lot of juniors. And there's a lot of doctors coming out of Indonesia. Coming out of uh, again, it's, again, it's, it's most probably even it's some of them when they get really good, good. They also go and they get qualify as a team. The think of U.S. or U.S. or U.S. or U.S. or U.S. or U.S. or Yeah, there's a lot of players. And I remember some of the officials did ask me once why uh, so there are not a lot of officials you know, me one coming out of Indonesia, uh, even though they have a lot of coming out of Indonesia, even though they have a lot of. Uh, 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 it's also, you know, uh, it's, it's the individual, I believe, they have to practice a lot. And then having tournaments in the country. You know, international tournaments in the country also give them an opportunity to see what it is, the talent that is outside of the country. Because I think having uh, international events in your country gives that opportunity because you're, they're coming to your doorstep. Like even if you have tournaments and right now in Bangladesh, you have the Asian tour coming in as well. Um, you know, it gives the players an opportunity to face the talents to see the talents from that are outside that's international and at your doorstep. So you do save the money for that. And then once you come into the country, you know, you get a certain uh, allotment or spots for your local professionals. And it's just having more tournaments to help you or getting played locally, having local tournaments within your country, you know, for the professionals to play, because this is only when they can practice it's like a practice or pre preparation, right? Because, you know, even when they, like if they want to go and play in the Asian tour, you have to go to Q school. Now Q school is tough. There's like five to 700 players from all over the world that is coming in to try and get this, maybe uh, I think uh, 60 or 40 cards, right? Asian tour cards. So it's a tough, it's very tough. 
So you have to practice and having more tournaments, you know, developing the players. Um, that's great. Not only pr practice when the tournament is just coming around. Uh, I believe that's how I believe it. Okay. Okay. I'll come back. Stand by, please. Uh, let me bring Mr. Brigadier Selim Akhtar again. Sir, can you hear me, sir? Uh, can hey. you hear me, Selim Akhtar? Uh, can you hear me, Selim Akhtar? Loud and clear. Uh, okay, sir. So I think there is this. Okay, sir. So I think there is this. There in your audio. There in your audio. Uh, your audio. I'm shutting all the other. Uh, your audio. So what I am speaking is getting echoed by your laptop. What I am speaking is getting echoed by your laptop speaker or. Laptop. Mobile. Laptop is closed. All other apps on the phone is closed. Okay. 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 Okay, sir. Let me go ahead with this one. Okay. No okay. Okay. Okay, sir. Let me go ahead with this one. No problem. Uh, about I was uh, wondering if you can tell something what all we should do now for the development of golf and why do you see Bangladesh no, golf? Why do you see Bangladesh golf? Uh, let me uh, a little word of from where we uh, finished a uh, while ago. The Q school on the Asian tour has become highly competitive now. What it was ten years ago when Siddiq and others went. Because you find most of the European players who are not making it to the European Tour card are coming to the Asian Tour Q School. So you look at the Q School list of Asian Tour, probably 60-70% are Europeans there now. So the level of competition has become extremely high. The problem with the players in countries like such as Myanmar or Bangladesh, uh, any amount of practice on your own will not help. Is golf has become highly technical. You need a uh, you need a, players to be put under proper coach for not for 10 weeks or 12 weeks, for a year or two years. They have to correct your foundation. They have to take out your mistakes. So it's a, it's a big time investment, which the players are not being able to do because obvious financial reasons. Like we had the Ledbetter Academy here, we had to shut down uh, because there were not enough people going there. So uh, we have the Golf Academy now, but because of some funding issues, they're not being able to set up their own training studio, which is the Trackman others. Unless we can, the, unless uh, we can invest in the basic training facilities, uh, which is technical uh, in form of with the Trackman or whatever you're using, and a proper coaches, qualified coaches, not coaches like the issue is in most of the, these countries, including Bangladesh or even Myanmar, because I spent three years there. The coaches are basically players who are playing golf. For last maybe 15 20 years and learned on their own they themselves may have a lot of uh, faults and in their basic game uh, so unless we can invest on those technical issues and coaches and put these people the potential players to one year or two years training program i don't see any possibility of new players coming out the two possibilities are the siddiq with jamal and sohail but to my assessment i may be wrong uh, they got distracted in other issues and they did not focus enough to take the game up to the uh, level of Siddiq or breakthrough in, uh, for the Asian to Q school. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Uh, uh, now, uh, let me add uh, comments from our comments friends from our friend, 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 who have been watching our this show. Uh, show. Uh, uh, Okay, uh, somebody okay, is yeah, somebody Jogomondu Jogomondu asked, 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 uh, have joined army of obviously for their financial benefits. They have a secured job. They have secured monthly income. The problem of uh, people who are turning pro in Bangladesh is unless they need a source of income for a pro, everything, every money that he spends on training or practice or for the uh, competition is from his pocket. It's like launching yourself for a small business and you're investing and if you're not getting the return, you will die, you'll not survive. That's the whole issue about uh, being a pro in, uh, in in golf, and uh, Bangladesh still has not developed to a level where they can provide many opportunities to them. Golf as an industry is far, far away to develop uh, 
the PPGA that we created is only about maybe five, seven years old or eight years old. And again, because of the COVID-19, uh, there are no tournaments. And these 100 plus so-called professional golfers that we have, their only means of earning or survival was the PPGA small little tournament. Sir, I want to know yeah, why you are lacking. Why are lacking? Why are Why are Why we cannot give them return? Why we cannot give them? Say again. Return. Return. Oh, the return is the golfer's money will come from the sponsors. You cannot uh, bring in the money. The game has to go to a, it's, it's, it's a very difficult situation. Unless you produce a win, the sponsor is not going to come. The day Asian, uh, Siddiq got the Asian 2 trophy in Brunei, we, we started getting sponsors. You see? So, and I, I keep on telling these players unless you produce some kind of performance, you'll not get a sponsor. Why would the sponsor spend millions of taka for what he will calculate return on business? There has to be some return of business. Uh, so it's a difficult situation. He says, sir, I don't get sponsor. who can pay for my expenses. I cannot train, so I cannot improve. And the sponsor says, well, I don't get a return, so I, uh, what do I get by investing so much on this sponsorship of, of this game? You see, in cricket in Bangladesh, there's no dearth of money. But uh, golf has a problem because it's still... So, uh, it's, we, we are in a situation where the players... I don't know how can we fund them to for the improve on their training, uh, improve on their standard, so they can start breaking through and produce some results. The day they start getting results, um, you'll have the sponsors even available locally. Okay, Without I got that, you. Okay, I got you. Oh, that is related to their partnership of our people. And, and they are right. and they they keep telling, keep telling, keep telling that they don't get that performance. One more thing, uh, Shiddi, uh, Mahmoud, about uh, this few golfers who are on the line. Uh, I don't know if it's better for me to say Bangla. Can you bear with it? I speak a little bit of Bangla for some of the golfers who are online. Okay, sir. Uh, okay, sir. ball pitale practice kolle dusho ball charsho ball kono lab hobe na. Gyoto Kalata needed a shik shik shaken shop golfer, a BPJ player, Kalat needed a needed a shika among Dosh Barbocho, Kalat Poretomik, connect a coach, Katagas, so the basic foundation on egg bulas, on egg bulas. Oldly K Shudrete, do we take it, do we take a thin botcher on coach under proper training quarter, Puranjistake, Bear Kore, Badi, and Roduda Ante? Basic simple calculation is. To me, when you hit the, you know, on a, if you can achieve, like I asked Ian Smith, the guy who came from Germany, when do you decide to become a pro? It's an investment. Either you go through the trackman test, which and you score okay, uh, doing 80% plus, but that doesn't work all the time because like Porosh here, he scores 90% plus on the trackman, but still can't produce a good score on the tournament. Uh, the, the good answer from Ian Smith was when you have a consistent handicap of plus three, four, which means you are playing 300, 400 all the time on your course or all the courses around you consistently, you can then hope to become a pro. The most of the pros we have, Amadar Poja, actually their handicap is four, five, or maybe more in some cases. So in fact, our, 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 our like where no, 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 no. like is uh, the capital is the capital is the capital is the let me explain the plus handicap. Before Siddiq turned pro and uh, Mithun of Sri Lanka turned pro, I remember the when Mithun and his uh, two other Sri Lankans when they come used to come here, they were plus two handicap. Plus two handicap means if he has played 72 on Kurmitola, his net score is 74. The handicap that we have, in, generally we practice on amateurs is a minus handicap. We minus it. So if you I play 72, you play 72 gross on Spormitola, your net handicap is, uh, your net score is 74. His net score has to, that means plus and handicap means every every time he has to play under on the, your course, three or four under. How many BPGA players have achieved that skill? 
that is the it first is question. Is so that will tell you how many players will uh, have a chance of getting into the international tour. Okay, that's a very okay, good point. Very good point. Okay, let me say another thing. Shobar, Shobar, Bujaj, Shobar, Bujaj, Shobar, Bujaj, a player should be able to hit the fair, fairway uh, at least 70% uh, 70, 70 times. He, uh, even if he misses the fairway, if he cannot hit the green 80, 75 to 80% uh, uh, times, he cannot hope to uh, score good. His putting average on a good day has to be 27, 28, which means if you're on an 18 hole, he should, if he cannot hit 13 to 14 fairways, and he cannot hit about 14 to 15 greens and so just three parameters. Did I hit 13 or 14 fairways? Did I get about 14 or 15 greens? Did I do say 27, 28 parts? He does not have to look at the score. If he has done it, you have played three, three minus, three under, four under. They are hitting the, their average fairway hits about eight to 10. The green hits are about 12 to 13. So that's where is the issue. Accuracy, okay. accuracy. Okay, okay, I'll come okay, back to okay, you. I'll come back to you. Mr. 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 Can you hear me? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. I have finished my stock of questions. Now I am going to the questions of the audience. Some of the audience wanted to know about your, you are from Myanmar, maybe from Facebook profile they found out. So uh. how many golf courses you have in Myanmar? What is Asian junior, I mean, in your Facebook profile, maybe it is there. You're also involved with in Asian junior golf. What is that? Asian junior golf, it is. it says. So another question let me take for you. Uh, I found some other question. These are the guys often coming to this show. Uh, Jagabundu Roy, tell something about Asian golf. How did you find Bangladesh? How COVID is affecting golf? So take this four to five question is answer kindly together. Okay. Uh, uh, yes, in Myanmar, uh, you know, we did have Asian tour tournaments. We call them Myanmar Open, and we did have certain uh, sponsorship. And earlier on, you know, what um, Mr. Salim touched on, sponsorship is very important because you can't do any of these tournaments without sponsorship. So we did have sponsors coming in. Uh, you know, we have local sponsors. Then uh, the past. Uh, maybe from 2000, uh, from 2016 to 18, we had a Japanese company that actually um, sponsored our Myanmar Open, which was the biggest in the country with $750,000 as a price money. And we even have live TV. And, you know, it, live TV is very expensive, but uh, it's actually very good for the country um, and all it's very good for the country, even though with, I think maybe in uh, Bangladesh, you may have the Asian tour uh, highlights or the Asian tour show if they still have it. But with the junior golf, uh, we call it the JGTA. Yes, I was involved with them for a year. It was also like starting up the Asian tour because I was involved in starting up the Asian tour as well. And um, it was creating, a tor creating tournaments for juniors who would like to uh, study in the U.S. for college. Uh, so with the Junior Tour of Asia, what we did was more giving them points uh, system, just like what the Asian Tour did, because they don't get money, so we don't do the order. Our order of merit is through the points. And then at the end of the year, which is maybe around May, which the, the, the Junior Golf Tour is usually from September to May, they we get the, the highest uh, players boys and girls, and uh, they get to go and play in the AJGA, the American Junior Golf Academy uh, Association in the US, their tournament, and they have over 200 tournaments. Now in Myanmar, we do have a lot of golf courses, maybe around 130 golf courses. Um, a, a lot of them are nine holes, and some are 18 holes, but some are tournament uh, usable for tournaments. Of course, during the tournaments, when we're gonna have an Asian tour tournament, a, a big tournament, international tournament as such, we really develop the course. So it's uh, ready for an Asian Tour tournament. But there are a lot of golf courses. But uh, earlier, like uh, what uh, uh, um, uh, Mr. Salem said, that, you know, practice is good. Now, yes, the livelihood, the pros, their, their livelihood is playing golf. 
Now, if you don't have enough golf tournaments that is going to pay for the livelihood, everybody has family, they will go and do other stuff because like, especially now in COVID, you know, all the tournaments are canceled, uh, canceled or postponed, you know, so they do need to make a living. So they will go into different, different uh, types of work that they can, they can do to, you know, to support the livelihood and the family. But, okay. um, Let me add here, Mr. Toy. You had been uh -huh. an expert. I must say that you had been an expert administrator for Asian Tour and also Myanmar Golf and many other golf, junior golf, Asian junior golf, as we know. I know. So, uh -huh. how did you convince? What is the method or a way of convincing sponsor? How you, you used to do or you used to market or you used to convince the sponsor to come in and invest here in golf, sponsor a tournament like this? A $10 million, $1 million, or uh, as you said, Myanmar Golf has got a sponsor of 7,000, 750. Uh, what is that? I forgot. Yeah. You say 7.5. Uh, 7, uh, 750. So that's only uh, the price money. So to how convince, do you convince them? Why uh, they still, came? Right. I mean, there's different um, uh, things that sponsors do look at. Number one is if there's an international sponsor, they want to do something in the country, maybe a business. So the like, let's like, like say Myanmar, like they want to do a big tournament or in any country, they, they want to have the publicity, the brand awareness. And on top of that, also they see that they're helping the country in helping the country. Let's say it can be, it can be in their, um, helping the country like sports, right? The sports industry. Another thing is uh, the government, what the government wants or looks because having an international tournament do give you an exposure to the world and shows that the, you know, in, in let's say with Asian tour on the television side, they don't only just show the golf tournament, they show what's in the city, what's there to go and visit, you know, what, about the country. So there's a little bit teasers about that or different culture, the cultures of the country. So it's a bit of a tourism part as well. Like in Brunei, we did quite a lot of different things, you know, um, with with the tour. Yes, the TV will we, the TV will show the um, the golf definitely, but also we do different little things like uh, maybe tasting the local food, uh, going to different areas. We used to go to the Provosus Monkey area, you know, just a lot of different things, and we bring in a lot of media. So this gives an exposure to the country. Now, if, if so that's one of the things the sponsors look at also, it's their brand awareness. They want to be also shown to be uh, involved with a premier uh, international event. And this shows, if you're involved with a premier international event, your branding, it's a premier event. So that's how, you know, we propose to some of the uh, sponsors to see how they can get involved because it's the exposure that they get. It's just not, you know, uh, putting up banners or, um, you know, getting their logo on. It's just, uh, it, it, there's a bigger picture to this whole thing. Okay, you had been telling about international sponsors, so I understood, but what's about local one, like Myanmar, why they're getting so much big amount of money for a sponsor to sponsor a tournament. So locally, what should you do? Um, so anyway, then the latest one, uh, you know, we had, which was a big sponsor, uh, way in the earlier days, we had um, the Rothmans, uh, it was a cigarette company. But then, you know, in the international law, you could not use uh, cigarette, uh, cigarette logos or any uh, cigarette um, visual arts, right, onto the things, uh, onto the tournament. So there was a way that we can work on that. So Rothmans came in, that's an international company. Then we went with the Myanmar local companies where there was like Air Bagan, there was like Air Bagan was the airline, airline that I put in. So it doesn't mean that, you know, to be a main sponsor, yes, you have to have one big chunk of money. Now, but there are other ways where you can pool in the money and you might have to share. The, the Let's say it will be the Bangladesh Open, for example, mm -hmm. then you can have sponsors that are more, uh, we call it like, we won't call main sponsor because main sponsor is a big one. It can be a presenting sponsor if you want your logo to be uh, on its own, or you can have different sponsors that are smaller, but then you can pull that to make up, you know, 
what okay. the, I, I, I got your point. That's uh, very good points. If you go uh, very nitty I mean, the details point you yeah. have been telling. Very good point. Uh, Miss Toy, I'll come back to you. Let sure. me bring back uh, Miss Salim uh, Mr. Salim Akhtar. Brigadier Salim Akhtar, sir, again. Uh, can you hear me, sir? Brigadier Salim Akhtar. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, sir. Uh, well, yes. I take the question from the uh, screen. Uh, there is a question for you, Mr. Atal Goni Galib asked for Mr. Selim Akhtar. My question is for uh, what business should do? I think you answered this. Why no Siddiqui no player is growing? Why our score is 12 over? He, I think he meant <laughs> BPG score that I talked. So why why our score is 12 over? I mean, our cut level is 12 over. And why no new player is growing? Why, what businessman should do? As uh, uh, Ms. Toy also is telling, it's for international golf, international golf tournament in Bangladesh also, once we find open, people are jumping in to sponsor that. But local BPJ tournament for the pros, based on which they will grow, nobody is coming to sponsor that. So what all we should do for that? As I said earlier, I, I know a little bit about Myanmar also because I spent three years going around. In fact, in year 2000, when the Trigger Company Triple Five was doing it at Jangon Golf Club, one of the oldest golf clubs in the region. I was walking behind watching the players play. I've seen the a tournament uh, in a few other golf courses also in Myanmar. Uh, the private one, I'm, uh, the, I'm I'm forgetting the name of one, the best one you have in Myanmar. Uh, uh, anyway, the problem is uh, it, it's a difficult situation. You need regular game where they can continue and practice. They must produce results. When the sponsors come and see, well, I get no mileage out of it. I mean, there's no benefit. Compared to Bangladesh, Golf is much more popular even at the remote areas. I've played in Myanmar in very remote areas, absolutely far northeast, uh, besides being Mandalay, far up in the north. I'm forgetting the name of the place. Uh, in some, so in all other different, but always you find a golf court, people are playing. It's not a good golf quality, quality golf court, people are playing. So when you there, when you engage golf, you engage people. Here, when you engage golf in Bangladesh, as a businessman, I'm Who's going to, how many people on the in the market were going to watch golf? It's still not a popular sport. We have popularized over the last 10, 15 years to a level where people know it in Dhaka or few other cities, but probably we'll have to wait. But the issue of why the players are not coming up, as I said, after Siddiq, we should have had Jamal or Soel at least breaking through into the Asian circuit. But uh, my assessment was they got into many other distractions, many other distractions. Uh, I don't want to mention about that. Why? What about the other players? Uh, the amount of effort I've seen Siddiq doing in his early stage before he became pro, I've not seen another player here doing that. Uh, the level of effort, concentration, and work. Still today, Siddiq spends a huge amount of money of what he earns on his training. He spent a huge amount of money. He went, twice he went to USF for training. Because I told him, Siddiq, you need to go to Florida, do some technical training a couple of years back. I fixed up everything. I fixed up the coach. I fixed up the golf academy where he'll go, which coach, I, everything. I fixed him a mental coach. He was spending money on the mental coach consistently. Uh, this guy from Canada, he still coaches him regularly uh, on the tour. Siddiq spent, spent a lot of money training in Germany, in the Philippines, in Malaysia, off and on. You have to, golfers have to spend a part of his money on his regular coaching and training, which others are not being able to do one because he does not have enough income. Those few among the top 10 who have little income, few of them, I, I don't know name, they've gone up to Calcutta, but uh, to coaches, but they are, to me, not very high grade coaches. Uh, that's, uh, so they have not been able to do proper coaching and they've not been uh, put in their own sincere effort to improve it. That's why it's not breaking out in Bangladesh. We have to now rely on the new generation. And I think in the new generation, you have some new players coming up. If they don't get distracted and BPJ provides them the platform to make a reasonable earning for their survival, you'll have to wait for a couple of more years. It takes, okay. to my estimate, it takes what, more than 10 years to make a player. Okay, sir. Uh, I like to add, add here, like you said, reach of golf in Bangladesh is not up to the market yet. But my question, my experience is last 15 years, uh, we had been uh, arranging a number of international tournaments like Asian Tour, Asian Development Tour, PGTI, 
and all these faldo series and all the bgc a lot of international community coming in media coming in our local media in asian tour at least 15 tv channel lot of uh, magazine lot of, like this one we are now in three platform live telecasting live only for creating awareness so how much time it will take for bangladesh to create that awareness among uh, general mass to get them know about golf you know uh, um, sorry 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 the biggest thing yeah I just want to share some experience that we had because everybody, you know, in a most probably. Okay, in Asia, let me go then to Miss Toy. Okay, oh, sorry, Miss Toy, go ahead. Everybody in Asia, you know, through my experience, when I talk to a lot of different countries, because I used to look after 21 countries, their main thing is, you know, when they they think golf as a um, a, a sport for leisure, expensive, and you know. Um, it's not really, a, they think that everybody who plays there or who gets involved with the game are affluent people, you know, and they see golf in a different way. So what the Federation have been trying to do, not only Bangladesh, others, is also to, you know, change that mindset around. And that's very important because they think, oh, it's a leisure sport there or just like, older people playing. Now on this on the professional side, the the pros, they do need local events. So this is just a suggestion if you can get because sponsors they will see it's a one off. But sponsors do not also know how to take it forward, right? They will see this tournament, have it there, they have the brand there and that's it. But they don't know how to utilize that event to their advantage to move it forward right it can be continuing on for uh, the whole year round trying to use that element of sponsorship and let's say in bangladesh if if sponsors don't come in maybe there's a suggestion that the the federation could go to a potential sponsor and give them a, a big sponsorship uh, ask for a big sponsorship and then underneath that you do different tournaments maybe not only uh, you you go to different um cities, right, where you can have golf, little tournaments, just maybe for the prize money could be just for the local event. And this gives the the local players, uh, professionals, something to look forward to, because they may go and practice and everything, right? And then it is also a budgetary thing. Now they may go and practice, but then they have nowhere to go and play. And then to go and play international, you just can't go and play because you have to enter and they may have a certain rules and regulations and guidelines that you, you just okay. can't just... Uh, Ms. Tway, if you can kindly, we are over shooting our time. Oh, sorry. If okay, you, go ahead. Uh, if, you, if you can kindly tell us something about COVID, is it affecting golf in Asia or in Myanmar? We'll buy that comment. Maybe if Bigger Selim Akhtar is not there, uh, yes. we'll finish. If we cannot reach him, okay. then we'll come, okay. uh, finish the uh, episode. Go well, ahead. COVID definitely, COVID definitely is affecting every sports industry, not only golf, you know, and not only in Asia, it's everywhere around the world. You, uh, you see that uh, some of the big tournaments like the Masters and maybe the Open, they're all postponed, like even the Olympics, right? Even in Singapore, the F1, they're all, um, they're all postponed till next year. Now, because, you know, these are crowd uh crowd gathering events, big crowd gathering events. I mean, there are some tournaments some that are going, that are going, going on US, in the U.S., but, but there's no there's no there's no right? It's for the it's sake, for the of, sake of, of play. play. Now, in now, Myanmar, in there's Myanmar, no there's uh, there's uh, the uh, the 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 But the business are just burning. And I'm sure in a lot of places as well. So COVID definitely has affected all sports and all oh, these thank you. thank you very much uh, please stand by lastly for last time can you hear me yes yes oh, okay okay so as i we have this toy lot of lot of tournaments lot of tournaments Although she is a lot of tournaments, 
a lot of media coverage, of media coverage, coverage like, like, especially the first question to so why we cannot so why we cannot capitalize on this why we could not why reach to the reach to them Can you hear me? Because you hear me? Because you yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, if I understood you, why we are not uh, improving, uh, reaching the level that you want in golf, is that correct? Yes. Yes. Uh, for Bangladesh, the first thing is you still do not have a a. a we we well, we do have certified coaches in the golf academy now, but then you still do not have even its golf academy does not have a training studio. the golf is extremely technical extremely technical now it's turned into physics science now now you need a training studio with uh, equipment like trackman with high speed cameras and swing analysis softwares and a few other things like that unless you can break up a person's game into different components uh, maybe he's turning too much his weight shift is not correct his swing is imperfect his club head speed is not good enough it's he's opening up his face you break up the small components and unless you do all that you cannot improve the game it's very easy i mean if you you compare to a developed country especially where the golf is gone up to very high level in europe or the us uh, it's you can find it probably in every mall or training center on commercial basis where you could go and spend half an hour one hour and train or go to practice range and do under under a coach and all these things it's not a single facility available in bangladesh let let better can be was one which had started but because of the cost it did not pick up so they had to shut it down also unless you can provide them the technical coaching uh, 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 from a good coach over the years the basic foundations are not coming up i simple parameters i mean where why you golfers are to me golf today is a pure a mathematical model on a i tell people when golfers talk to me you have got a 450 uh, 4, 450 uh, par 4 if you cannot drive 300 yards or close to 300 if you drive about 300 you're left at 150 which means you're hitting a 7 iron or an 8 iron probably you can hold a, a ball on the green but if you are doing only 270 and then you have to take a test, second shot with a 5 wood uh, you'll never hit the green even if you hit the green so that is the issue uh, because they're driving this they these are certain parameters markers will tell you whether they can come up to a level or they cannot Hitting 300 simply doesn't mean that you are very powerful. It just means the second shot has become with a short iron, and which you can cut, spin it, control it, and put it on the green. The, then the next question to ask is: He will know himself, the local golfer. Can he hit the green 14, 15 times on every 18 hole round? He cannot. He's barely doing 10, 11. Can he finish the on average at the 18 hole course? a uh, round in about 28 29 parts or in worst case but below 30 parts he cannot do it how can he improve his game how can he expect a good score the day he, he can achieve this 14 15 greens and 28 parts he doesn't have to look at a score he's playing 400 his accuracy his technique his swing lot of faults are there in the game uh, he does he, he keeps on just hitting the ball Sir, got his point. But who who will look up? We have been talking about two things. Yeah, I PPG was the only platform because nobody will come to help you from outside. I told the the current president many times when they got elected that look, do something for the players to bring up the game. Get a sign a contract with the Ledbetter KB on a long term basis. and put your top 10 players under the ledbetter academy for 6 months and you can negotiate a rate that okay uh, two classes a week or three classes a week uh, for these players over the next 6 months bring them down to the correct their problem if you had gone into a program like that you had the money you had the that much of money to pay for the ledbetter for 10 players you could out of 10 players if you had started with 10 you probably would have got four players onto the circuit Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Very solid points. Let's see balls. Okay, for the last time, we are going to be 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 going to be
Yeah, I think, you, uh, you know, uh, for your local, local uh, the PGA, um, again, it's always budgetary, you know, for each player also. They, they can practice, but then having the coaches and everything, if the PGA will uh, bring in the coaches for them, uh, that'll be great. But then afterwards, it's also on their own. They have to practice properly. Uh, they have to have an intention of trying to excel, right? Uh, it is a, a game that really you need to focus on. But of course, there's a lot of distractions nowadays, and it's hard for uh, the player to excel. But in, in other words, also the PGA, even you have tried to get them all this um, uh, learning, learning facilities or skills or everything, uh, for them to practice on, you do need to have tournaments because you can practice as much as you can, but you need to show that in the tournaments, you know, you have even the local tournaments, have the local tournaments, try and get sponsors from them, show them that, you know, there's a lot more, you know, they are, they are trying to get the top players in the national team to go and compete overseas. You know, you might have it and golf is in the Olympics anyway. So, you know, those are the way you have to try and propose the sponsors. Then you can get little local tournaments so that, as much as they practice, they need to go and play. They need to play in a competitive world because that's very important. Or else, and on top of and then the next level is play internationally because that's you can play amongst yourself, but you already know each other. So play internationally okay. or support okay. them in some way. I'm not sure. Okay, okay, Mr. A, uh, last time uh, for last the last time for the last time. Last time. Last time. Say, say again. If you want to, add, you want anything, to add anything, no, thank you, you very much. Uh, yeah, me. thank you very much for having me there. And uh, I'm, I'm on voluntary basis. I can still uh, help if they if people want uh, help or in some ways. But the last, as I mentioned, my last comment was uh, BPJ PPJ as organization could have helped taken the ten the top of the ten top players and could have invested on them with a little bit of KB, But that's gone now. They have to invest. They have to work jointly with the be a uh, Balinese Golf Academy to develop programs with the Golf Academy and maybe uh, work out a cost with the Golf Academy will be happy to do for them. They are, they are trying to set up a, a training uh, training studio, the Golf Academy. If that comes through, BPJ should work with the Golf Academy because the players cannot pay for their expenses of training. A BPJ should fund it. Okay, we, will, we are funding these 10 players or 20 players. But with a with a with a with a problem, okay. When you every time you win, you'll give five percent, ten percent of your win money back to the BPJ as the repayment of this loan. Only when they're winning it. So you work with the golf academy to develop some training programs for the pros. Okay, sir. Okay, Thank sir. you very much for your Thank comment. You uh, we'll finish the program as our time is overshooting. Thank you very much, both of you, sir. Yeah. You people are. Uh, yeah, it's my pleasure to have such personality, golf personality, today in our in my show. So thank you very much, Mr. Way. You have connected from all the way from Singapore and spent at least one hour time with us. Because Selim Akhtar, sir, it is my pleasure. I am obliged to both of you. Thank you very much, sir. Good thank afternoon. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.